Mm-hmm. Hey, Leanna. We're almost there. We're almost starting. Buckle up, buddy. Hey everybody, good evening. It's Jason LeClaire. This is Jason Robert LeClaire's Cartoons and Creatures. We are here today. I am going to be working on Fantastic Fairies. Why, you may ask. Well, why not? But let's get a little bit more detailed. So, I am going to be at the Beltane Festival at uh, the Dragonfly Apothecary in Chipatchet, Rhode Island. And I've been asked not only to show my work, I'll be selling prints, but I'll also be doing fairy portraits. So I've got to kind of formulate some pretty decent fairy looks before I start popping people's heads on them. So that's what tonight's about. I'm going to sit here and we are going to work toward getting on the paper some concepts for what we'll see on May 1st. Let's go to the drawing board. Ah, the drawing board. Ah, that's a little better. Now, for those of you who are watching in Instagram land, you just heard me and all this background stuff, but you didn't get to see my lovely face. I'm so sorry, um, because the Instagram cam has to be pretty close to what I'm working on, otherwise it doesn't work good. The bad part about this is that you get my arm in the way of quite a bit. So, here we go, guys. I'm gonna be working on some fairies. And, oof, I, mean, I just realized that my camera for Instagram, I love my Instagram folk. Um, that camera is completely ill-adjusted on its tripod. Oh, there I am! And they got a sneak peek of, of what this fun little face looks like. And uh, I think more funny than fun, but that's me. Oop, water bottle in the shot. You better now? Okay, good. Now I can actually get up close and do my job. Here we go. I hope you guys don't have too bad of a shot on the side of my head. All right. So what are the kinds of fantastic fairies that we're going to bring with us? Well, it all depends on who's coming with, who's, who's going to the Beltane Festival. So I'm going to expect that there's going to be parents and kids. Um, and that there's going to be a variety of ages. And certainly a variety of interests. So it's good for me to have, oh, hello, clock. It's good for me to have some sort of basic structure here while I'm working so I can see what exactly I would do um, when I am going to be doing very portraits. So let's just start with somewhere in the middle. We'll start with a teenager. Now how I do this is I've got a couple different ways I'm going to do this. One of the ways is I will be snapping somebody's uh, face in a on my iPad and working with a preset body type and then making their face appear as a cartoon, much like what is in the intro slide before we started here. So the first thing you guys have to understand is how I make fairies. Fairies for me are lanky. Um, and just kind of like very mischievous and all over the place. I love drawing them flying because when I'm drawing them flying, they're just completely free and having a lot of fun.
And the thing about this is, like, they said, oh, we're going to hire a caricaturist. That's fine and dandy, but that's not what I do. I gave up caricatures a long time ago at a local mall. Not doing that again, thank you. I'm going to do what I like to do, and what I like to do is make some favorites. So I'm just going to start with a wave hand on this here. And kind of an out hand on this one. The wave hand is there, and I usually make, like, almost really cartoony sort of feature. So I'm going to go with like a preteen here. Um, it kind of doesn't matter what gender or whatnot, the same basic shapes, only a couple things get altered. And we've got tons of different wings that we can use, but this is, like I said, this basic one. So I'm going to try to do the dragonfly wing on here. It is the dragonfly apothecary after all. Um, so we're going to have fun with that. I'm going to check my chat. Nobody's looking at me on YouTube. I hope you guys are enjoying it over here. Because nobody's seen this. That's okay. I'm not hurt. <laughs> yeah. I'm very bad at fake crying. Alright, here we go. So now, that I've got the basic fairy kind of like outline of what I want to do. I like three fingers on my fairies because... I think they're very cartoony and they're otherworldly, so I don't have a problem with them not having all the digits. In fact, why do we need a pinky? Really seriously? We don't need a pinky. Not that I want to give up my pinky, I've grown quite attached to it. And this weekend, I, I had a lot of inspiration because this weekend was the home and garden show uh, here in Rhode Island in our state capital of Providence. We had the Home and Garden Show, and there were just some beautiful displays. Oh my gosh. I wanted to take them all home. It was gorgeous. And of course, I got way too many ideas about, oh, I want that shed because I can turn that into a studio. Yeah, not happening right now. That's okay. I'm good with it. All right, so let's take somebody's face. When I'm doing this, when I'm going to be drawing someone, I'm going to be using some cartoon standards while I'm doing this. So let's look at a couple of those cartoon standards that are going to appear on this fairy. Okay? One of the cartoon standards is, you know, the Disney princess eye. You see that in a lot of my work. I kind of go with this eye. Particularly with fairies, I like it because it's kind of like Got some depth, and you can do a lot with it expression-wise. But the eyes really did, are determined by the person you're drawing, right? Because not everybody's eyes are the same. In fact, that would be kind of boring. So I look for my standards. Doing this is, is formulaic. I have bases that I start with, and then I go ahead and I alter them as what I need. So another base might be something that I don't know. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to put out the basic areas of the base that I'll probably see. For most people. I know, it looks like it's the face. Well, it is. If we're dealing with preteen, more likely, I can get away with kind of like some vague features. And there's kind of a certain amount of you know, androgyny at this point um, with the concept art. I don't want to make it too much one or the other right now. So I'm going to take their ears, whatever their ears are, um, and we're going to make them my style fairy ears. I don't know why I like these. I like these long ears that are almost like antennae. Oh. And then whatever hairstyle they have. I'm going to take the hairstyle. Wow, 
gonna get the, the actual phase is gonna take a lot of you know ideas about what people are doing, what they're seeing, um, who exactly is gonna be there. And that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. I like to I like kind of seeing where things are coming from. So chest cavity, abdomen, waist and hips. I hamstring, calf. Let me put your basic here. Very, very basic. You're so basic. Um, sorry, I'm putting myself there. I hang out with teenagers all day. So this is the basis for most of the fairy work. It's going to be pretty standard. Um, you're going to have the person's face in here, and then some sort of standard fairy body. Now we can do anything we want with this. So we can put magic in it. We can have, say we've got somebody that's really interested in, I don't know, there's soccer. Well, for soccer, I'd probably have the ball balancing somewhere that looks a little odd. Either here or like on the flower. And we put that soccer ball just hanging out. So that's usually like kids are going to be involved in whatever they're involved in, and that's cool. That's fine, and I'll just accommodate them and draw those things. So that's the caricature part of this, is that it, it kind of takes and forms a, a world of its own. With it. So this is kind of where I'm at with that. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to look at, I'm actually going to go over right here. I'm going to look at some other fey folk. So not everybody's going to want to be a fairy, or your standard fairy. So let's think about some other faithfuls we can play with. I wouldn't mind if somebody said, I want to be a warrior. Okay, cool. Warrior it is. But what kind of warrior do you want to be? Well, short of being D&D-ish, we're going to make ourselves a little bit of a goblin. Not everybody likes to be nice things. Some, some people like to be, you know, things that are misunderstood, like goblins. And in order to do that and make the person not terribly insulted, what I have to do is I have to kind of concentrate on what their facial features are. Still make them smiling. Still make it look like them and probably extend to them some sort of fade here. Because again, not everything's the same. Somebody might think, this is just a really cool way to express myself, and I'm cool. So with these little mini goblins, I'll probably do something like acorn hats as their shields. Yeah. And maybe they have a little underdeveloped things. They aren't quite. They're just baby things. It's always the funnest thing when somebody walks up to me and says, Can you do a character of my baby? I'm sorry guys, but like babies don't have a lot of distinguishing features, and if they do, you probably don't want me drawing them. But that's okay. I can do that. So these are a couple of ideas that I'm playing with. <coughs> Pardon me, everyone. Um, for these fantastical fairies. The other thing that we can do is other other fae folk. So let's take a look at some other fae folk here. Um, I'm working on some mermaid work, and I had this idea about like a warrior mermaid. Now I didn't really like these ones; they were kind of like not quite doing what I wanted them to. Do. So this is where we ended up. Now I've got. Both of these here, and there's a new there's a new toy that I want to play with, and it's something I don't normally I, I normally have not had. I'm kind of shirked away from for years, uh, and students are gonna like laugh at me right now because I just got myself some alcohol markers. 
So what I'm going to try to do is I want to see what I can do with her. Let's see what we can do with the scales. Um, I'm going to grab a variety of blues that I think would go nicely together. And some greens, perhaps. I'm going to keep it simple. I'm just going to do like two or three colors. Who am I kidding? That's not me. Um, yeah, there we go. Four colors. Oh, I want a little bit of four, four, four colors here. So, I'm not used to working with alcohol. This is a totally new territory for me, and I find it kind of exciting because I've never done it before. So, I think I'm going to start with the midtone right here. And I'm going to start with the fine because I've got like some really tight areas in here. I definitely want to start with the tail section. <coughs> Allergies are not fun. So I'm going to start with just a little bit of a shadowish sort of piece here. And again, this is an experiment, so let's see what it does now. I'm going to switch over to um, the Aqua Mint. Actually sounds kind of tasty. And let's It's pretty good, but it doesn't give me enough contrast. It definitely is giving me some sort of gradient vibe. Okay, artist friends out there, how do you describe gradient to somebody if they only know it as ombre? Are they really the same thing? Inquiring minds want to know. That's kind of cool. I like that. Hmm. Okay, I think we might pursue that. Um, but as I do that, I want to make sure that I'm breaking out all the fun colors. So let's grab an Indian blue. Just to give us a little bit of a darker portion up here. So once again, I, I will be making fairy portraits or fey portraits of people on May the 1st up in Chipachet, Rhode Island. So if you are local, come on over to the Dragonfly Apothecary on May 1st, which is a Sunday. And come and see me. I will have all of my all of my favorite um All of my favorite drawings of fairies, of the fantastical, um, my dragons will be there, and I'll be doing fairy portraits. So I'd love to see you. It's going to be a great day of celebration and fun. Um, lots of vendors. There's a food truck coming, so or so I hear, which, you know, when I heard food, and that just kind of like, yeah, I'm sold, I'll do it. Um, in all seriousness, it's the holiday for the Wicca faith that lies between spring equinox and summer solstice, like the halfway point. Um, most people know it as May Day, and there are a lot of um, a lot of people that celebrate that in different ways. Uh, but this is the kind of like the original, the modern version of the original, but this is the original. So, being at that festival, I'm going to have a lot of fun and have a lot of artwork. My originals will be for sale. I'm going to have some limited edition Jicle prints of the Green Man and of my three witches from Macbeth. So those are two pieces that I thought deserved to get a little bit of a uh, nice treatment. The rest of the pieces will be in prints. Uh, they will not have a limited run. Um, they will be numbered, but they won't have a limited run. And I'll be selling those 
as fit prints uh, in bags ready to rock and roll. And you can go ahead and get them framed at your local frame shop or just you know, tack them to a wall somewhere. I don't know. Whatever floats your boat. Appointment again. I'm kind of liking these, these colors. I'm sorry for every kid that I ever said, that's not a professional tool to, um, unless, you know, I always thought of it more as a tool for people that are designing cars and such, because this is what they do. They use markers to get it put together. These things are a very fun device, I'm finding. And now I feel that. So I'll probably be using these markers when making the portraits as well. And there'll be different prices for um, full color versus black and white, etc. So the way it's gonna work is I am going to find out what you want for a fey folk, whether it's a mermaid or a fairy or a little troll, goblin, or whatever or a pixie, and then I'll probably take a snapshot of your face, or whomever you're buying it for, and you can go off and enjoy the festival, and in about 20 minutes I will have a full-out black and white for you. If you want color, it can probably take a bit longer, and if you want a digital, Well, I haven't quite figured that out. But I will, don't worry, I've still got a couple weeks. Thank you for all of the people that are joining me on Instagram. Really helpful to see wonderful, wonderful names and icons up there that are people I care about and love to see. everybody's doing well tonight. It was a gorgeous day here in Rhode Island. It was a little chilly. Didn't get much above 50. But the sun was out. We were bright. Beautiful clouds. And all that jazz. And I had a great time. India blue, no, I'm play. I'm gonna make that a shadow color so I can kind of It's not pretty good. So I'm okay with that. I find that's good. I want to try to do some sort of uh, skin tone, however, and that's where things get a little bit messy. I'm finding with these markers, so I need to practice some, and I'm fine with that. Practice is what makes it work. If you don't go ahead and work your practice, uh, what's the point? So... That is a color called Skin White. And I am of the opinion that I can use several colors all the time to make this happen. Um, try some a bit of bronze and I want to get some life in there so we we'll use a light pink okay that looks pretty good and then what happens when I start working on this stuff Ooh, that's a big one that's kind of more than I would bargain for 
Excuse me. That would be the dark, dark side coat. And then what happens if I throw a little pink in here? Not bad, not bad. And then I am going to start with some other colors that I think would be no better done properly. Dark chocolate, let's move that into a natural oak. Radiate it down into a mahogany. And then bring it into <coughs> a raw umber. Liking these things more and more and more. Well, guess what? I'm doing for the next couple weeks. I'm practicing these other stuff. Oh, as I get closer and closer to getting this done. So let's attack the mermaid's face. That sounded really bad out of context. <clears throat> and I think what I want to do is I actually kind of want to make a little bit of... Um, I want to make some blue tone in there. I don't know why. Too. Um, probably because she's a mermaid. And fake folk don't have to be in a particular color. You can do whatever they want. They're a fae. So when I take that and then I'm going to grab one of those other colors that I was playing with, um, I think I grab the light pink. For something different going on. I feel like I'm creating a monster high monsters monster high doll. If anybody remembers those from the early 2010s. Kids were very much into those. They were fun. I'm gonna take that what they call skin white. Come in here with me. Go right over that pink with it. Bring it all together. Even the blue tinges out there. For all to see in love. I like it. That looks pretty cool. That makes me happy. Ooh, we got more people joining in. Hi, y'all. Wave, wave, wave. Okay. That works quite well. I'm liking it so far. So, let's go back to what we were working on. And think of how we are going to... This is when I try to draw, show kids how to draw. Alright, 
working on these guys. So let's try to form them up first. <coughs> In order to do that, I kind of need to set them up with some sort of, well, frankly, microns. The reason why is because microns are absolutely wonderful at being, um, I mean, I love the fact that they're very, very water resistant and they give beautiful detail all the time. <coughs> oh, sorry, guys. Oh, anybody else having fun with allergies right now? As you can hear, mine are kicking my butt. That's okay. I don't mind. I didn't need that butt. Let's start on this one over here. So, normally, what I'm probably going to do when I do these portraits on the first is I'm going to really work on getting the facial structure correct, but I'm going to do mostly a giant contour on the outside. Now, what a contour is, is the outside makeup of a figure, an object, whatever. Um, in this case, the contour for me is all the exterior outlines makes the contour. So I'll start with that. Pen for that one. And again, formulaic. It's some things that I normally do. Fairies pants. But I also want them to kind of look like leaves. Just a thing. Now I'm not going to outline those wings because they are dragonfly wings and they need to have only, you know, a very thin outline or color on them. That was the worst hand I have ever done. That's okay. I'm just sketching. And as my students know, you have to do a lot of sketching before you get it right in the first place. That's what tonight's exercise is for. I'm going to have to be doing a lot of these, I hope. I hope I have. Especially if all you wonderful people that are in the local vicinity of me, in Rhode Island, Southern Mass, whatever, come and join us at Beltane at the... Oh, there's my clock. Bailey, it's okay. It's just a clock. For those of you that don't know him, Bailey is my trusty and wonderful beagle who decides that he wants to join me down here quite frequently while I am in the studio working on stuff. And for the most part, it's his nap time because that's his contribution to my work. And this is why I tell people to come back in 20 minutes. Go ahead and make this happen. If I were doing like a 30 second caricature, that's a different story. Even if you're going to do one of those, it's at least a five minute sit time. And those of you who are on YouTube watching me, thank you very much for tuning in. Please subscribe to the channel. And I try to get this done every Sunday night. Speaking of which, I will not be here next Sunday. Next Sunday is a holiday for a lot of folk, and I am going to enjoy some family time. 
not that I don't like you all, but I I will not be uh, broadcasting that day, streaming that day. So don't take it as an insult. I still love you, but I get upset. That's family oriented and fun. It's a lot of fun. I get a lot of fun doing this. But I have a lot of fun with my family and getting to see them and chilling with them for a little bit. Now, if you get some time to be with your family too, it is that Sunday sort of vibe. As I mentioned, there was the Rhode Island Home and Garden Show this weekend at our convention center. It was really, there were wonderful, wonderful, wonderful products there. Um, for me, it was really nice to see so many companies available that are doing solar panels and other environmental energy sources to help out with the climate uh, and climate change. And they were talking on a consumer level. That's the thing that's really interesting for me. These companies have been around for a long time. Solar energy is not new. But on a consumer level, it is. To the extent that it is right now. And for that, I'm very glad. And the entire event was kind of sponsored for that, to that end. Um, as you walked in, it was all the electric company that provides electricity here in Rhode Island, which would be National Grid. Um, they had all their ecos, eco-friendly uh, bulbs out for super low prices, you know, like a dollar for an LED replace your regular stuff. I, I work with LEDs here all the time. That's actually all I have. Um, but I do like to make sure that I have different variations on them. So I've got cool white, warm white, all sorts. So now I'm grabbing this really almost marker-like micron. And again, the reason why microns are very valuable in this industry for what I'm doing anyway, for cartooning is because they are waterproof and they don't run. They set very, very quickly. So when I'm going to attack this with um, the alcohol markers, it won't run and mix with my alcohol markers. My first alcohol marker experiment and did really badly. I had this drawing that I've been working on for quite a few hours, and I put it aside. I broke it out to test the markers with it. And I had done it in ballpoint. Yeah. Don't put marker over ballpoint. It's not a good thing. It destroyed the picture, and I am long lamenting it, but I will go ahead and get that particular fairy put back where she belongs. That's why there are light tables. All right, so now we've got this little fairy chap. I'm over here, I'm gonna grab my Jarno Mungus eraser. One thing I don't do is I do have electric razors, racers, erasers. The mouth is not functioning today. The allergies are kicking in right on top of my respiratory system. So pardon me for flubbing that one up. Anywho. So I don't use those as much for stuff like this. I save those for final pieces. And also if I'm gonna draw in negative, like we did a couple weeks ago, where I made a graphite painting and then came back to it with the electric uh, erasers and 
pulled out some spaces for some nice highlights. And yes, I do have a little eraser brush. I've always said this, and it, it actually holds very, very true, <coughs> that it is just as important to have the proper tools as it is to have the proper skill to do anything you want to. And I think that that's one of those things that my dad taught me years ago. My dad and I used to do um, odd jobs and build decks for people in the you know, late 80s. He'd take me out on construction jobs and do stuff. He was a shop teacher, so he had a very good reputation for being very handy. And uh, so we went out and I learned a ton from him for over a few years working with him on the odd jobs here and there. And I'm glad I did because now I use a lot of that when I'm doing stuff like constructing theater sets. Not that I do that very often. I'm working on one right now, but I haven't worked on one in two years, obviously, because we haven't had theater in two years. So, <coughs> we are going to look at getting this little guy some sort of tonality and using the markers to help with that. So let's see. <sighs> Again, you know, these can be any number of shades does not have to be any particular color. It just is what it is. So I think I'm gonna get rid of that skin white for now because it's kind of like weirding me out. <coughs> and I'm gonna grab, what is he gonna grab everybody? Fruit pink and light pale pink. Okay, you ready, buddy? Here we go. Fruit pink and light berry pink. Oh, that does that looks really kind of weird, but let's have some fun with it. Ooh, it's RNG. You get to be a tangerine man. Let's see how that works with the pale pink. Ooh, I don't like that one. I think maybe I want to bring my watercolors instead of these. Yeah, I'm going to do that. <laughs> I will practice with these more for a different occasion. I will go ahead and bring my watercolors, which those of you that know me and those of you that have, that have turned tuned in, um, have seen me work with watercolors. I love working with watercolors. And so they're a lot quicker. And that's what I'm going to do for this particular video. I'm working with watercolors on some nice Fabriano watercolor paper. Make some original paintings for folks. So this is not anything but a little too, too much on on that. I'm not going to do that again. Okay. So let's look for something different. Pale pink light. This is like really, they're fun tools, but they're so difficult to learn on the fly. You really got to know what you're doing. I admire people that can do this. And I don't mind being on here right now, streaming, and you guys seeing me mess up. Because, I mean, I teach full-time at Cumberland High School here in Rhode Island. It's a, a local district. Um, and one of the things about working full-time as an art teacher is that I get to tell the kids one really important thing 
and they sometimes don't know how to take it. Um, I tell them that I'm only at the front of the classroom because I've screwed up more than they have. And I'm a very big believer in experimenting, trying, making the mistakes, and, you know, learning from them. And I make a lot of mistakes. With new things. Because I need to learn how they work. Um. <coughs> but that's why I challenge myself with new media. New media. Because I want to find out what's working and that is not. Way too dark. That frightens it up nicely. This still has to shut up. Okay, that. And again, this is all about experimenting and trying different things. Like I said, I haven't been ever wanting to use these types of markers. Like, I always steered away from them, didn't want to have anything to do with them. Um, and, you know, that kind of jaded me to what they can do. So, I figured, you know what, I'm going to give them a try. Because people love them, they use them all the time, they make wonderful art out of them. Um, so I'm going to give them a whirl. And yeah, I went overboard again, like I do all the time, and I went ahead and I bought a set of like a hundred and something. Now, the part about that you have to understand, and this is going to sound like any sort of like person that shops too much, they were on sale. They're very much on sale. They're, they're an off brand, they're not, you know, Copix or anything like that. I don't want to start with a top notch tool when I'm experimenting. Um, I will eventually go to those, but, you know, I did a lot of my early painting work with Liquid Tech Basics, which is their student line. Um, same with Winnie Newton. We used their student line when I was learning how to manipulate watercolor. <coughs> Woof! One thing I do know, though, is how to make... Iridescent. <laughs> he says ominously. I love making iridescent things. Um, and I think these markers are going to be good for that. This is always a matter of like, what color do you put with what? Where do you want it? How do you apply it? Mm -hmm. I know. I'm in a very weird mood to me, guys. My allergies are super kicking in, as you can hear with the nasally voice. So tomorrow's going to be fun. That work. Talking already. I heard that. Whoever said. Like, you'd never have a problem talking. Well, maybe I imagined it, but still. We got a pink down. Gotta work on our blue. I wish I had a color blender for these things. It's a blank alcohol marker. Yep, 
definitely bringing watercolors to Beltane. Sorry for everybody who got excited about watching me struggle with a new material. I love you too. And I almost forgot this little guy's hair. Let's do something out of the way. Oh, pretty. Yes, it's very pretty. Yes, I know. Pastel blue. As I can. And I'm doodling, I'm sketching, I'm trying to figure out some formulas for some fantastic fairies in a couple weeks. And I've already discovered that I'm absolutely not going to be using these markers since I am not well trained enough in them. I do not trust my competency or proficiency in them to justifiably sell someone artwork with it. So you are looking right now at me not failing, but really not knowing what I'm doing with these. And it's kind of fun every once in a while. Pick up a totally new tool and try to figure out what can I do with this. It's just a matter of how open are you to doing new things with new skills. And there we have it. We got one fairy done. Played around with Little Mermaid and got some stuff done in that, which is great because that is actually part of a larger painting I'm working on, um, which I keep teasing about, but it's a very long, drawn out process. So sorry if you are waiting with bated breath. Um, I hope whatever you baited it with wasn't too nasty. In the interim, I am going to say good night to our folk hanging out. Oh, Allegra's here in D Block. Hi, guys. Thanks for tuning in. I'm so happy. It's 8.22 here on the East Coast of the United States, and I am going to settle down now, try to go rest my voice from all the fun allergies that have been kicking my tush. And what I will leave you with is stay safe, stay healthy, and make art.